Hi everyone. Today we're going to be talking about three ways to learn if a child is a victim of sexual abuse. I remember that um, it took me 20 years to disclose my abuse and I spoke to my mom about it. Um, it's not something that's very easy. It takes a lot of courage to go up to somebody and talk to them about it. And also um, many children decide to never talk about it because they feel that the parents will not understand the parent bonding is also missing in many cases. I understand that it's scary to think about a child being a victim and a nightmare to even consider that your child is in danger. But it's important to learn to respond sensitively. You may find out about the abuse through one of these three ways, suspicion, discovery or disclosure. So let's first talk about suspicion. You may witness some red flag behaviors by an adult like spending a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with the child uh, or giving them special gifts for no occasion. The child may also have knowledge of some sexual acts which are not age appropriate. So maybe there's an older child who has exposed them to pornography or sexually explicit jokes. If you suspect that a child is vulnerable, you must intervene. Discovery number two. You witness a boundary violation, you need to describe the behavior, set a limit and move on. Let me tell you an example. So you can say it looks like Jia is not comfortable with this hugging and kissing. Jia, maybe you can decide another way that you want to show affection. Maybe a high five, a fist bump. Jia, let's get something to eat. So these are the three ways that you have shown um, describe the behavior that feels uncomfortable. You have, you know, uh, intervened and set a limit and then you've sort of moved on from that situation. So it could also be something that is happening online, like finding naked photos of children or inappropriate conversations with adults, you know, these chats and uh, Snapchats. So that's another uh, form of discovery. Third, disclosure. Most children delay disclosure or never talk about it. So let me share some tips that you can provide optimal conditions so that they can disclose. First, directly ask them about experiences of abuse. Listen, believe and respond appropriately. Give them information and vocabulary on what constitutes abuse. It could be about safe versus unsafe touch. It could be about getting them in touch with their feelings, like the icky feelings, so they can come and talk to you and describe what is happening to them. And lastly, teach them how to get help. So help them identify safe adults or talk to them that there is a helpline that exists, like Childline 1098, where they can call if they need help. Second thing that you can do is be mindful and respond sensitively. This is in terms of disclosure. So from the moment they start talking to you about something that find, they find uncomfortable, you become involved in their healing process. So what do you need to do? You need to listen actively. Do not rush them or ask specific questions. You need to be compassionate. I'm glad you told me this was not your fault. Third, the most important words you can tell them is, I believe you. Fourth, you can control your reaction. Don't get angry, don't overreact, don't make it about yourself um, and how shocking it is for you. Imagine the child has gone through this, so what they are going through. So don't make them feel more anxious, otherwise they will feel like, listen, my parent can't deal with this, so I'm not going to talk to them about it. Fifth, you need to be calm, breathe, um, allow your child to talk, don't probe for details, don't put words in their mouth, don't try and fill in the blanks with maybe this happened, maybe that, just listen to them. Sixth, do not make any negative or demeaning statements. So why didn't you come to me earlier? Why didn't you say no? Why didn't you get away? You know, this is not the time to point out what they could have done differently. You just need to listen and support. Supporting is the main thing that you can do here. Often abusers threaten them 
uh, they say that you know they'll um, the parents won't believe you or you will create a problem in the family and so it's important for you to not add to this burden by telling them to keep it a secret don't tell them to forgive the offender because many times it's a family member or somebody you know and the child is often asked to let it go and get over it so please uh, that's not advisable at all because it hinders with the child's ability to heal and it enables the perpetrator to continue with their destructive behavior finally it's important for you to have the courage to report the case there are various ways you can do this because now it's mandatory under the poxo law which is protection of children from sexual offenses so you need to report any incident or any case that you come across and there are various ways you can do this 1098 is the child line number that uh, is easily accessible and something you can easily do and then they will warn the other stakeholders and take the process forward word uh, another easy way for you to do this online is to go to the epoxo inbox which is on the ncpcr government website and uh, they'll ask you for very basic details um and then they will take it forward thank you so much for all that you do to keep our children safe this is anuja amin thank you so much for listening in